Yo, what's going on with it once again? Ladies and gentlemen, bros, women, fanboys, and fangirls, and as always, we'll talk to Nikki Kimboys out there. It's Nintendo Sony Free 2011, aka Mini Wolverine. Of course, you guys out there know the rest of the interest, not just towards the channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all the good stuff. I kind of got to keep it a little bit low, which really sucks. I had to fucking do that, but the only time out of the day I'm be able to do a video today, unfortunately. And I had to bring these old school bad boys with me. <laughs> I gave my goggles. I ain't wearing a different little, like, um, sweatshirt. I'm, I don't know where the other one was at. Somewhere in this place. I don't know fucking where, but it's somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep my voice down as hard as I can because it's going to be extremely fucking complex to do that. But only two things I'm hoping for. Uh, I think this is just all, like, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate stuff because it does say Mr. Sakura Presents. Something else. <laughs> in the latest Smash Brothers or whatever it is. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't wait for it though. Whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be. I just hope it's really, really good. I might have to condense it down a little bit faster. I might have to like speed up the volume or speed up the way the video processes, which sucks, but I'll probably look at it later in my own time. So, uh, links down below if you want to watch this video yourself. Oh, I really hope Nintendo doesn't give me a claim or nothing like that. Three, two, one, let's get in. Oh, and hopefully. I mean, hearing stuff about this, like, media thing, oh, God. A lot of people on YouTube have been talking about it a billion times already, but there's this crap about going on this thing called Jukin Media. I think they're mainly going after real big people that are a million plus subscribers or higher. I don't know why, but eh, it's kind of a bitch. They even went to <laughs> went after my boy freaking Tyro Magnus. They even went after him. And that's crazy as fuck, man, to think he got hurt, like, in this copyright strike shit. Well, hopefully Nintendo. I hope you were a lot more humbler than that compared to Juke of Media because I really don't want to get that on my channel. So, 3, 2, 1, let's get it. I know you guys are the ones that own all the rights, don't own all the licensing. That's all you guys. I'm not trying to take anything from you. All right, 3, 2, 1, let's go. Whew, here we go. Oh, they're already starting off my character. There you got my Switch memory this time. First time, finally. Ugh. I hope it's going to be really good. I don't think it's going to be quick enough. I might be going to be quick enough. Oh, it's going to be quick enough. The time has finally come to unleash the forbidden spell of Zaharas upon our enemies. Wow. <laughs> That's going to be from a different franchise of Golden Sun. That would be freaking mind blowing if that was the case. I doubt it, though. Gonna be another female what were you thinking, charging right into an oh, enemy's trap? The three As you and I are one, I too am trapped within this void. <laughs> In time, our hearts and minds will cease to be. Are you prepared to die? I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. And yet... a very sexy female character, Oh, there is no other like choice. You must join oh, Smash. Oh, <gasps> crap. He's going to be in a Smash. Join Smash, Smash Brothers already. What in the world are you waiting for? Oh, so Tom's officially going to be in a Smash Brothers. Okay. Oh, no, a lot of people are Oh, it's not Crown, it's another one. Blitz. So joining Smash consumes even the darkness itself. So it's not really nothing super mind blowing. So you return, and sooner than expected. I see. Too many swordsmen are there? And you, you wield the sword as well? Oh, what will you do? Shut up, this man. He's a way more hardcore fire plan than me. Huh. So that is how you plan to win the day? So be it. I reward your cleverness this time. How is this? Oh, okay. Oh. 
Of anyone, you should be able to handle the hero's relics. Aaron fought. Strike with superior reach. Use Amir's overwhelming power. Unleash the blinding speed of Fail Not. Along with the sword of the creator, each weapon matches a direction. Probably a smash. That's what we'll call it. That's what we'll call it for now. Yes, there you have it. Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses is joining the battle. Fire Emblem Three Houses was released just last summer, so it's still very new. Even so, you'll soon be able to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This release is planned for January 28th. You'll have instant access if you have the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass, and it will also be available for purchase individually. In case you're not familiar with Fire Emblem or Three Houses, I'll explain a few things, so don't worry. First off, what is Fire Emblem? It's really hard to pronounce in Japanese. The producer said it's okay if I just say Fire Emblem. But when writing it, if you don't write Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem police will come and get you, so please be careful. The series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. You might be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. Well, it's tactical in that it simulates combat. You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game, or in other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid and battle. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, sort of like in role-playing games. Plus, something made it stand out from other Nintendo products. Characters could permanently die. That's pretty direct language, though, so perhaps we should just say they're sleeping with fishes. But really, if a character fell in battle, you'd lose that unit. They'd be gone, and you couldn't use them again. Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you, but a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be gone, never to be mentioned again. Scary. <laughs> the game stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters in engrossing scenarios. Several characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. series, and six of the seven can use a counter attack. It's their down special. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's turn, they attack, and you counter. Next comes your turn. And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? Well, if you include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, but you don't include the Satellaview game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. So let's try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. I'll give it a try. There you go, 17. <laughs> so, you saw how I was counting in a weird way, right? I was counting in binary. This is zero. You fold this here and you get one, then you get two, so two plus one equals three. So, this would be four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you get 16. Add one and you get 17. Awesome, isn't it? You can actually count up to 31 on one hand. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1023. If you've given up counting the knots in a tatami mat, you could always give it a go. What is Fire Emblem Three Houses? In Japanese, the male version of the main character is called Bereto, and the female version is called Bereto, but in English, they share the same name, Violet. So Violet becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. 
Once you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school life, and, well, you end up fighting the other houses. After a certain incident, five years pass, and you meet up with your grown-up students to battle against the other houses in their regions. It's a very sad game in which your former allies become enemies, turn hostile, and try to kill you. To understand the concept of Fire Emblem Three Houses, I played an early version of the game before its release. I've done the same thing before, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example. Because I couldn't wait until launch to experience it, or we'd have never made it in time. For that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days, ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time. Hmm, I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. I did the same this time, but with there being three houses and multiple endings, it was really hard to get a feel for it. And of course, there weren't any walkthroughs I could reference. The game has multiple routes, and the outcome of each is very different. Your experience will vary depending on the route you choose, and many of the characters you meet will adopt different roles in the story. I'll try to avoid spoilers when I'm talking about the fighter. I hope you'll understand. Before my demonstration, I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogard Showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. But this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Right now, it's actually November. Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here I go. So, this is our new fighter, Violet. Sadly, they're lacking in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Throws are not their strong point either. Their grab lacks range. But actually, you could say that they're a distance demon. The hero's relic they use changes depending on the direction you input for the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Violet uses for upward inputs, the Sword of the Creator. The Sword of the Creator here is Violet's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes the form of a whip. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, they'll whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. For their up air attack, they'll wave the whip sword overhead. The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. The up special move is really something. The sword extends like this, allowing you to do things like this. It was pretty terrifying how I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition, you can do awful things like this. That said, you'll launch opponents upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. Exceed that percentage and you'll need to be careful. You may find it helpful to their dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. So, that's the up special. Now, for the sideways inputs. This is air Tar, the same name as the weapon from Celtic Mythology. First, we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have a long reach. Like so. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? If Byleth does the same thing, you win out, so you should be able to beat it. Next, the side smash attack. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it will be stronger. And if you've knocked an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for it. By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. The shaft part is weaker, so it's not suited to close combat. It won't deal much damage, and it won't launch opponents far. And that's why, as a rule, you want to hit with the blade part aimed upward. Or downward, in this case. Next, the side special move. Byleth will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has an excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little, like this. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, so be careful. Use it in midair and it'll carve up a large area. Returning to the side air attacks from earlier, they have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. So this complements it well. Although you'll be vulnerable when you land. Now, for the downward inputs. For these, Byleth will use an axe called Emir. It's named after a weapon that appears in Ugaritic myth. First, the down air attack. It really is strong. You can try for a meteor effect with this attack. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. And for the down special, Violet channels all their energy into a devastating strike. It's a bold move, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect, which allows you to withstand an attack. 
Just so you know, if you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time, it plays out like this. It's a bit slower than the Falcon Punch, but due to the super armor effect, you have the advantage. Unless you get grabs. Another notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breeze past platforms like this to reach a lower area. It won't let you jump, but you can use it as a surprise attack. Also, you can turn around during the move. The swing takes a while, so if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. Even though it can be hard to land a hit with this move, it can be really effective when used against a group of opponents. Plus, even if you fail to land a direct hit, any opponents on the ground nearby will still be launched a little bit. It's as if the quake move around launches them. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series, because you'll just get loads of counters. It hits you with that much power in a single attack. Counters can actually multiply the power of blocked attacks, and using easily anticipated attacks like this can just get you hit by counter after counter. Next, we have the neutral moves. The bow you use is called Failmot, which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral air attack. This attack is similar to a move of Pits and other fighters like it. It lets you spin the weapon around. It's also easy to create certain combos with it. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. First, the biggest difference between this bow and Link's is that once you enter the command, you can keep charging until it's ready. You can't release it partway through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels at high speed. It's also very powerful. That said, you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. You can also change direction while in the stance. It works up until this point, but if you keep holding the button, you'll unleash a powerful arrow that looks like a beam of light. You can perform this move by keeping the button held down. You charge up power like so, charge a bit more, and then fire. But again, you'll need to take care when using this move. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Not even with the shield button. In other words, you're committed to firing it. So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. Once you've entered the stand, you won't be able to do anything. Which means it's quite the risky attack to use against fighters who have a move with a reflector effect. But you could always just aim into the fray, as it is, after all, a long-range move. Letting you deal a sudden blow to opponents. So, you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. By this final smash is called Progenitor God, Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, there's a move called Ruptured Heaven. This is an enhanced version. As you can see, you team up with the mysterious Sophus and launch an attack together. Now, let's talk about the color variations. It's set up so that the default and odd-numbered color variations are male, while the even-numbered ones are female. However, the third, fourth, and fifth colors are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Those of you who played the original game will of course understand what I'm referring to. The sixth color is based on Sophus, who you just saw earlier. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on, based on something that occurs in the course of the original game story. Didn't we see this variation in the final smash? Next, I'll introduce the stage. For this one, we of course tried to recreate the place where you spend most of the game, Garrick Mock Monastery. This is how Garrick Mock Monastery is laid out in the original game. From these, we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, and cathedral all in one stage. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first area is the marketplace. I think this is where a lot of people come to do their shopping. The guests that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's house, Dimitri, Dedu, and Ingrid. Not Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Their names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Since it's a kingdom, that means they have a monarchy. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite a difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. He's an unfortunate one, that one. There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things, but... Uh, here you can break them, you see. If you do break them, the stage will expand to the left and right. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. And in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. You often pass through this area in Fire Emblem Three Houses, and you end up talking to them a lot. Moving through these areas is possible thanks to this mysterious platform. Just when it seems like you've come to a stop, you'll come crashing back down. You've broken through the ceiling and slammed into the building. And the guests in the reception hall are Edelgard, Dorothea, and Petra of the Black Eagles. Take note, it's not spelled Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire. And as such, they embrace their military might. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. 
You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible to knock them down. However, pilots can't actually reach it, even though it's their stage. You can reach it with other fighters, though. So, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. There we go, I made it. And you can knock it down. Also, you can break this table. Like so. Just like the sign that reads Fudin Kaza in the Suzaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. Next up, the bridge. The camera rotates 90 degrees, creating this long area. It's very wide indeed. It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer, Claude, Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong to the Leicester Alliance. Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. The naming process must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. <laughs> As for the bridge's design, it's just a long pathway, plain and simple. You can expect plenty of blows to be exchanged at the edges of the screen. You could also say it's a place where the fail knot really shines, and in this sense, I think it suits the Golden Deer perfectly. The last area is the cathedral, only with some platforms you can pass through. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Seda, Flame, and Rhea. There's Seda, who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister, Flame. She seems to be under the protection of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. I feel that Flame might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> this is a simple area of the stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Okay, today we'll have a tag team battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team pitted against Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. All right, here we go, Joker. Joker! And Hero! Gee, we really made a lot, huh? Banjo! <laughs> By now, I think you know what I'm doing. But basically, I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just the Professor here. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hand. It's not going to land that easily. Uh oh, this is bad. Then it gets. I better keep my distance. I'll use this chance to attack. Got it. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. Lots of explosives. Ouch. Holy shield of that, huh? Good one. If I do this, like this, or like so. No anti here, huh? There, the soccer ball connected. Good, there's mom. You're in a good spot, mom. Ah, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir's there or not. I feel like the enemy might get this smash wall. See, they got it. But they mustn't give up. I can't waste the chance. There's another smash ball. Yes, got it. Now, what are you charging up for? There's still more. Whack! Go on, you can take the hammer, but it's mine. Although, I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in the state. I hit him! I was trying to fight using violence abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. Good game. It can be fun to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. Now, about the additional music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being added. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. We're also adding in a new spirit board. It includes the house leaders among some of the other popular characters. So this is Legend Class. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series' history. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand, but you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Now for the Mi Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Ah, the costume.
back in the late 90s or 2000s. Oh. Time we got left. Oh, it's still a little bit left. Oh, it's only a dollar, barely a buck almost. Hi, Hunkai this time we're releasing a cuphead costume. And for those of you who purchased the cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cagney Carnation. I hope you enjoy these as well. After purchasing a costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone has created a Mii Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. And now, onto the Amiibo. The color palette for Dark Samus looks pretty good, doesn't it? Dark Samus and Victor are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. That's what comes out tomorrow, but it's when I'm like reacting to this video. And now, with the addition of Violet, the fighter's pass is finally complete. The lineup was Joker, Hero, Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogard, and Violet. From more than 70 fighters, only five have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. There really were a lot of new mechanics, weren't there? When we add a new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look. Oh god, there's gonna be someone else. Right, let me uh, actually slow this down right now. Oh, looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. For this reason, we will be releasing the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. It will be available for pre-purchase on the date shown, so please keep an eye out. And now that it's official, we intend to move ahead with development. Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now, and I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. Like last time, I'd be very grateful if, despite that, you would understand why and purchase it. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. But I still hope you'll look forward to it. We're also including a bonus with Fighters Pass Volume 2. Last time, it was a Rex costume. But this time, here's what we have. Whoa, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? It's a Mii Fighter costume for Mii Sword Fighter, the ancient soldier gear from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This will not be for sale individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. Oh, okay. There's going to be an additional like, bonus you get to have with it if you buy it. That's cool. Lastly. Oh, what else is going to be a special? It's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. It seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if you really want to get into the weeds. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? But when it comes to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. I feel like it's become more than a fighting game. Some sort of celebration of gaming or something else entirely. Also, I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. 
The first fighter's pass just wrapped up, but it was decided that there would be more DLC, which means no breaks for me. I plan to keep working hard, so I hope you can continue to support us. That's it. Thank you. Uh, that's a that's no more left after Dan. Damn. Oh. At least the Cuphead one was pretty enjoyable in my opinion. That and that Breath of the Wild, like, um, I don't know if they called him an evil dungeon master, whatever the fuck you want to call him, but yeah, overall thoughts, views, and opinions. Oh, man. I'm not going to say it upset me. I guess I was okay with it. I didn't have that much of a problem with it, but it's kind of a letdown in my opinion. I know some people really, really love that series. They're probably going to take it to the grave with them because that's how... Hugely ginormous of Fire Emblem fans that are out there. I don't blame them. Only reason I don't even like that game besides, you know, a lot of little action tidbits and adventures you could do. And not not just the lore, but like <laughs> just how the whole story premises is set up in that old school medieval time, you know. I'm gonna say it's my one most favorite parts of like well as far as Japanese games and stuff go, like the old school, like what it's based off, I guess a lot of English, UK, European like legends and stuff like that. I guess it could be. I'm not from Europe, though, so it wouldn't matter. I wouldn't know anything about that, but... It's an alright, like, decent IP platform title. Whatever the fuck you want to call it. Ugh, but, man. <laughs> I really hope that next, like, 6 to 11... I'm really hoping... Still got hope that, um, one day... One fucking day... Um, either Spyro Crash or, um... I doubt Goku's never gonna be in it ever, so I gave up hope on that a while ago. But you never know, um couple other ones like you know the, the real big ones that other people probably want besides me like um i know Rain man's a really highly anticipated character people have been wanting for a very long time the gino one he's pretty big the one with super mario maker rpg not super mario like maker not super mario rpg from the 90s at the time um a couple other ones they probably want more final fantasy characters i would like to get some more street fighter characters that'd be pretty good guys or uh, who else is on there any Tekken fighter would be really, really awesome for me. Very, or I know a lot of people wanted a Devil May Cry one. I would have been pissed off if that would have been the case because I don't really care about that IP game that much. As adventurous as it is, it kind of bores the crap out of me. I guess the Gecko, I know that's never going to fucking happen. If it does, that'd be awesome. A couple other ones out there I know that I'm missing, but that's all I got to say for now. I'm out of here. Links to the description box down below, like I said earlier in the video, and that's it. Peace out once again. Oh, and no. If you don't mind, I'm going to um, go back to playing my Switch thing again. <laughs> Peace out once again, ladies and gentlemen, bros, women, fanboys, and fangirls. And as always, we'll talk as Nikki Kamoy as I will see you when I see you guys. Good day, have a good night. We're everywhere in the universe out there. Stay tuned for more future um, content and channel, including video game industry news, anime manga news, internet news, and of course, reaction videos like this one. And that's it. Peace out. I'm at like sauerkraut, lacing goodbye. I'll see all you people on the flip side. Take it easy. I'm gone. I'm out. Later.